Hey guys, Level Cap here and welcome to another episode of This Week in Gaming. Now this week has been a wild ride for the gaming community. Star Wars Battlefront 2 came under heavy fire for its microtransaction system. It got so bad that EA had to disable it due to the outcry. What they plan on doing for the rest of the game's design flaws remains to be seen. The game will still take players in excess of 4,000 hours to unlock everything in the base game. The arcade mode still has cooldown timers that stop you from earning credits if you play for a little bit too long. Star cards still give players a huge advantage compared to those that don't have any unlocked or upgraded. And unlocking Darth Vader and some of the other big heroes in the game is still restricted behind a credit wall, which will take quite a bit of in-game grinding. Many aspects of the progression system seem designed to really just prey on your frustration. Thankfully, DICE has made it clear that they intend to change much of the game's progression system based on players' feedback. It's likely microtransactions will return to the game at some point in the future. The debate they've stirred up has caused many countries to start investigating in-game loot boxes as a form of gambling. This could affect the future of loot box systems in video games as we know it. Call of Duty World War II's microtransactions have also been put on hold. The game released with several technical issues, forcing Activision to disable some features of the game. COD Points, the game's real money currency, was one such feature. They can be earned by just playing the game, but outright purchasing them won't be possible until at least next week. Another feature that was disabled, dedicated servers, have been brought back online for COD World War II on PC. A patch was also released for the PC version that addressed field of view being reset, stuttering, some weapon balance, and just general bugs. In PUBG news, several new cosmetic items were data mined from PUBG's latest test server patch. This is the patch that implemented vaulting, new sound effects for vehicles, and an overhaul to weapons ballistics. While most of the items are just variations of clothing and accessories, three parachute skins were uncovered. They're much more colorful than the game's default green parachute. Assuming they do end up in the game, it'll be interesting to see if they make tracking people as they drop onto the map a bit easier. Data miners also uncovered a jet ski model and the full mini-map of the desert level coming in the 1.0 update. NVIDIA released a new batch of screenshots from the map that shows off more of its main city area and surrounding points of interest. PUBG's existing map, Erangel, is also getting some attention. The test server patch included a new pond and forest area behind the mansion of the map. It provides much better cover for getting to and from the mansion when heading north or south, and also makes getting to the surrounding buildings a little bit less dangerous. In our final bit of PUBG news, even more cheaters have been banned from the game. 100,000 accounts were banned just this past weekend. That brings the total number of bans up to 700,000. Now the devs have talked at length about the efforts to combat cheating in PUBG, but it's probably going to be an uphill battle for some time. New anti-cheat systems were put in place recently to help identify suspected cheaters faster. It looks like they're in effect for now, but only time will tell. Now the really disturbing thing about the 700,000 banned accounts is that if you stack that 700,000 number up against the 20 million copies of the game sold, that means in a fully stacked game of 100 players, there's going to be over three cheaters in there, just statistically speaking, and that's not accounting for the fact that they have not banned probably the majority of cheaters. That is an extremely upsetting statistic, and it really makes me think that probably most of the times I've been in a game where somebody kills me in a way that feels almost unbelievable, well, maybe it actually is. Maybe that person really was cheating the whole time. Crytek's free-to-play multiplayer FPS game Warface is getting a Battle Royale mode. The mode is launching next week in an experimental form for testing. Feedback from players will help determine what the future of the mode will look like. Warface was released in 2013 to mixed reviews. In January of this year, Crytek sold the game to My.com due to their financial difficulties at the time. Crytek is still maintaining Warface though. They're also developing another battle royale game called The Hunt Showdown, which I'm very excited for. 
Ubisoft has released trailers for the three new operators being added to Rainbow Six Siege's upcoming expansion, Operation White Noise. Vigil and Dockaby are both members of Korea's 707th Special Mission Battalion. Vigil is the defender that will most likely have some kind of counter intel ability that affects enemy drones. He may also have some sort of mask that prevents lethal headshots. Dockaby is an attacker that may be able to make defenders reveal their position via hacking of some kind. The third operator is Polish Special Forces Grom Officer Zofia Bosak. Based on her reveal trailer, she will most likely have a dual grenade launcher that can switch between immobilizing non-lethal rounds and lethal rounds of some variety. Siege is currently free to play in celebration of the Pro League Finals. More information about the upcoming expansion will be revealed during the event. Counter-Strike GO's matchmaking system is getting a total overhaul. Back in April of 2016, Valve launched the Prime Matchmaking Beta. To qualify for it, players had to achieve a certain rank via XP and attach a unique phone number to their account. The goal was to curb cheating in matchmaking without Valve having to totally rework Steam's anti-cheat client, VAC. Since then, Valve have been working with the machine learning system to improve VAC and are now implementing what they call the Trust Factor matchmaking system. Essentially, it ranks players' trustworthiness based on how they behave in CSGO and across other Valve multiplayer titles like Dota 2 and Team Fortress 2. Factors include how often you play CSGO, how frequently you're reported for cheating, and your time spent playing other games in your Steam library. Using your Trust Factor rank, CSGO's matchmaking system will pair players that are likely to have a good experience playing together. This means you should be running into less cheaters and hopefully less toxic players. Adding your phone number to the Steam account, like with Prime Matchmaking, will improve your Trust Factor. The hardcore World War I FPS Tannenberg, made by the developers of Verdun, is now available in open beta on Steam. Fans of games like Red Orchestra, Insurgency, and World War I era shooters should feel right at home in Tannenberg. The MMO shooter Wild West Online is also now available in early access. Buying the Towny edition of the game from the developer's website will unlock the closed alpha version of the game for players. It includes access to a limited set of features that will appear in the final game. Players can take part in public PvP events, quests, missions, and the game's progression system. More content will be added as the game gets closer to release, which is planned for this December. Bungie has released a trailer for the first Destiny 2 expansion, Curse of Osiris. In it, we see the title character Osiris freeze time and manipulate portals that let him travel between worlds. On Tuesday of next week, Bungie will be doing a live stream showcasing some of the new activities Curse of Osiris will offer. On PC, the latest NVIDIA drivers have substantially improved Destiny 2's performance on every modern GPU in their line. It's likely the improvement stems from a fix to the game's broken depth of field effect, so players that had it disabled before the update most likely won't see much of a performance bump. The newest hero for Overwatch, Moira, is now playable on all versions of the game. She's a support character with several abilities that both heal allies and damage enemies. Moira was added alongside a patch that buffed Anna's biotic rifle and further tweaked the game's most popular healer, Mercy. The Xbox One X's first week sales figures are estimated to be around 80,000 units sold in the UK. For comparison, the PS4 Pro sold only 50,000 units during its first week of release in the same region. Microsoft stopped giving out exact sales figures a while ago, so there's not a lot of concrete data on the Xbox One's overall performance. They have said, however, that the Xbox One X is the fastest selling Xbox to date. I think it's safe to say that console gamers have successfully entered an era in which the next generation of consoles will no longer make their older games obsolete. Console makers have seen the value in continuing to support their old titles, update them, and add new features like 4K support 
And that's really cool. It means that console gamers are going to get more value out of their consoles. They won't be forced to upgrade to the next gen systems and they're going to get basically the benefits that PC gamers get when new hardware comes out. You have the option to upgrade and make your game look better, but you're not necessarily required to. I hope this is a trend for all console developments down the road. That wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know which article you found the most interesting, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.